Hello, my name is Jared Ludlow, Publications Director at the BYU Religious Studies Center, your weekly resource for gospel scholarship. And today we'll discuss some possible resources that can accompany your Come Follow Me reading for June 26 through July 2nd, dealing with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. First one is called Revisiting Golgotha and the Garden Tomb by Jeff Chadwick, a religion faculty member here at BYU, and comes from a religious educator article. In this article, he discusses the possible uh, crucifixion and burial sites for Jesus Christ, uh, which of course then also would be the resurrection site. And the most known and venerated place for centuries by most Christians is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And so he'll talk a little bit about that, and also about the Garden Tomb, which is known more among Latter-day Saints and some other Protestant groups. And then he talks about Golgotha as a place of crucifixion. And interestingly enough, he uh, concludes that both the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and the Garden Tomb likely are not the burial sites for Jesus. But Golgotha spot near the Garden Tomb is most likely the place of crucifixion for Jesus. Uh, but he sees that his burial likely occurred on the other side of the hill from where the garden tomb is, but in that same area. And so he goes through and gives a lot of archaeological data and looks at the textual information, the burial practices of the first century, and does all of this to try to answer the question where these events occurred. And while some might find this very controversial because many had very powerful experiences at the Garden Tomb or in these other places. He says, if Latter-day Saints would regard the Garden Tomb as a teaching tool rather than as a shrine, a visit to the site or even a photo of the burial cave may still provide valuable insight into the New Testament events. Rather than venerate it as a sacred space, we would do well to employ the Garden Tomb as a visual aid a pleasant and useful locale that may continue to be used in teaching aspects of the accounts of Jesus' crucifixion, burial, and resurrection. The second article is called The Tragedy and Triumph of Resurrection. It's by Tom Wayman, a classics professor here at BYU. It comes from an Easter conference volume. And in this uh, discourse on the resurrection, he decides to focus more on the experience of the resurrection of Jesus through the eyes and emotions of those who wrote about it. So he is focusing on the emotional responses of Jesus' followers and sees those as more important than the historical event for this particular study. He says they attempted to convey what they felt when they encountered the resurrected Jesus for the first time. And often that was fear. And so he points out that resurrection was initially a tragedy before it was a triumph. They were still trying to come to grips with what it all meant and who is this new glorified being in front of them. And so each of the four evangelists described the primary emotion felt by those who went to the tomb or saw Jesus as fear, doubt, and uncertainty punctuate the evangelist's accounts. So he gives three proposals uh, to deal with this interaction of the early followers with the resurrection. First, an expression of fear may be a feature of respect and reverence meant to show that the earliest disciples approached the resurrected Jesus with appropriate devotion. Second, the death of Jesus ended friendships and relationships that were not restored through resurrection. Jesus is moving on and going to a different locale. And finally, the triumph of the resurrection was Jesus' triumph first and foremost, and over time it became the triumph of all Christians. And so he talks about how one of the challenges is, you know, that Jesus during his mortal ministry versus Jesus who lives today and is glorified. And so he kind of concludes with this thought. I think the creative energy that followed the resurrection, the energy that compelled Jesus' followers to find meaning in tragedy, is not unlike the modern experience. We seek solace when a loved one departs. We may feel that they were needed for another purpose, or we may feel that our limited perspective cannot grasp God's plan. If the New Testament teaches us anything, it is that it is okay to feel fear, to be hurt by loss, and to find creative ways to make sense of our new changed reality going forward. I think that is where hope comes in. The third article is called Resurrection, the Ultimate Triumph by Robert J. Matthews. It comes from a volume published by the Religious Study Center called Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. 
And the phrase, the ultimate triumph, is a phrase that actually comes from President Howard W. Hunter. And so he talks a little bit about that and how it is the key triumph of Christianity. Then he has five sections that he discusses the resurrection in more depth. Uh, first is the meaning of the word resurrection, of this rising again, and what this might have meant to the first century followers who first saw Jesus. Second, he focuses on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Third, he talks about God's interaction with physical element. In other words, if Jesus is able to do a lot of miracles, such as multiplying loaves and fishes or turning water to wine, he has power over physical elements. And the resurrection is a form of that power. Then he talks in section four about the divine plan of restoration. And that's a term we certainly see in the Book of Mormon used a lot uh, in regards to resurrection and restoring the body back to itself. And finally, he ends with talking about the resurrection of all mankind and all other living creatures and how this does become a universal event through Jesus Christ's resurrection. All mankind, all humans, mortals, all living creatures can be resurrected. The last article is called Picturing the Resurrection by Herman Dutot, a former art director here at the Museum of Art at BYU. It comes from an Easter conference volume. And this is a slightly different uh, article than some of the others in that it's focused on looking at 14 different images or paintings of the resurrection of Jesus from a variety of artists, from Karl Bloch to Rembrandt to Minerva Teichert and uh, others. And so he just kind of discusses each of these in brief paragraph form. Uh, and points out some of their symbolism or some of their intentions uh, and you know gives uh, some insights into how we can understand these pieces of art better and how they might relate to understanding the resurrection. And he makes a point at the end that inspired works of art have the power to edify and instruct to the extent that we approach them with an attitude of reverence and humility. Elder M. Russell Ballard stated, Inspired art speaks in the language of eternity, teaching things to the heart that the eyes and ears can never understand.